Hello! In this video, my colleagues and I will provide you with an overview of the Michigan Model of Leadership. So what is the Michigan Model of Leadership? To answer that, let's talk about leadership generally. While many of us work for organizations with a defined hierarchy of positions and titles, this structure does not define leadership. Leadership is not defined by a position or a title. Leaders can be anywhere within an organizational hierarchy, and their role as a leader is defined by their actions, not their title. Anyone at any time can decide to be a leader. Effective leaders are collaborative, not consequential. By that, I mean that effective leaders empower, support, challenge, and contribute toward common goals. Effective leaders do not produce results simply by demanding them. To use another phrase, leaders use carrots, not sticks. Effective leaders inventory their own traits and skills to maximize their own output, and great leaders are able to accurately assess the traits and skills of those around them in order to lead them effectively. Effective leadership requires a tailored approach for every audience. Effective leaders don't employ a one-size-fits-all approach, or even a one-size-fits-most. It is important to understand this backdrop, because recognizing that you have the capacity to be a leader begs the question. What kind of leader do I want to be? At the core of the Michigan model is a mission statement, making a positive difference in the world. Effective leaders are not absorbed by making sure we meet next month's production quotas or the current quarter's earnings per share guidance. Effective leaders share a relatable vision to rally around. Out from the core are four pillars or, or values that all leaders should share. Empathy, which is a commitment to seeing the world through others' eyes. Courage a commitment to innovative and innovation and progress in the face of risks. Integrity, a commitment to doing the right thing even when it is unpopular. And drive, a commitment to stretch and achieve challenging goals. These are common traits of all leaders in the Michigan model. But at this point is where their leaders begin to identify a more nuanced leadership style based on their skills and traits. Uh, as I said at the outset, there is not a single approach that will work. We become successful relying on our inherent traits and skills, and recognizing those can shape our effective leadership style. We have to consider balancing the multitude of objectives and demands that we're faced with every day, such as balancing the need for consensus versus the need for action, and the balance between measurable progress and immediate results. We all have styles that we favor, and these define the nuances of our leadership style. So how does it work? The first step is to figure out which quadrant with which you identify. The team at the Sanger Leadership Center has a variety of methods for doing this, but I suspect that most people will be able to identify uh, the dominant quadrant based simply upon the mission statements. It's also sometimes the case to see yourself as a blend of two colors, such as orange or purple. That's fine too. You'll hear from four speakers that will each identify a quadrant, and then they'll tell you a bit about that quadrant and I think you'll observe some differences in how each presenter tells you about their quadrant. You can take this as an example of some of the ways uh, that the style of the different quadrants present themselves. The red quadrant. The red quadrant is referred to as strategic structures. When you interact with others, are you data-driven, organized, systematic, and by the book? When you're in a team, do you help achieve the team goals by suggesting processes and systems? Do you catch errors and keep the team on track? What do you not like about working in a team? Do you like it when you have people on your team that break the rules, or you have people going rogue, or operating outside of the specifications or rules? If you answered yes to many of these questions, you may find yourself in the red quadrant. The red quadrant is referred to as strategic structures. Generally, people who find themselves in the red structures are oriented with design processes, are always looking for the right way to do something, tend to establish metrics, and are very organized and keep team and team goals on track and organized. Generally, <clears throat> positive attributes of people who are find themselves in the red quadrant are also find themselves very objective in their analysis. Although on the same token, they can also find themselves very being very critical and op and find themselves being very critical of team metrics and team operations. 
they appreciate managerial control, but tend to sometimes fall into the micromanagement category. They abide by procedural compliance, but that also tends to give, give itself towards over, overly, um, overly bureaucratic processes. And although the organization can sometimes be predictable, it also can cause some rigidity in the way that they focus as a group. And although they are generally very cost control prone, that also leads itself to some austerity. If you find yourself in the red group, you may want to take these positive attributes and try to outweigh them and not catch and try to catch yourself before you start falling into the too far into those positive attributes where you are contributing negatively to a group. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Kincaid from Riverview, Michigan, and today I'll be actually speaking with you from Washington, D.C. as we talk about the next quadrant in the Michigan model of leadership. The quadrant that we're going to talk today about today is actually the Blue Quadrant. And one of the cool things about the Blue Quadrant is I'm actually uh, part of the Blue Quadrant. Part of that Blue Quadrant is a person that's really results-driven, very competitive person, somebody that's really driving to try to achieve the next step and will go above and beyond to achieve that next step. We're individuals that are driven by data. As soon as we get the data, we want to take action to those. So if you take a look at some of the strengths that those individuals have, is they're the ones that you're going to go to if you want to kickstart something and get it moving fast. If you've got enough data that'll kind of tell you where you're at and allow somebody to analyze it and then immediately start moving forward, to set up what the goals are, what the tasks are that you want to achieve, uh, and then start really marching for those, uh, those goals. This type of individual is somebody that's going to take a look at those goals. They're going to be very competitive towards those goals, and they're really going to drive to try to meet those goals, goals with the data that they have in front of them. Some of the weaknesses on the flip side of that uh, for these types of individuals, as far as people like me, uh, we are very competitive. Uh, therefore, we will drive forward and sometimes we'll run over people. It's not all about bringing the team along all the time. It's We're type individuals that aren't going to have all the time, a whole lot of empathy uh, for others. It's about getting the job done. Uh, it's about really achieving what's the next step. Uh, and in doing that, we'll address the low performers, which can sometimes cause conflict. And as I said before, it's not always going to be a situation where the whole team comes forward when you're dealing with those. Kind of the opposite quadrant that we've got, uh, the group that's going to clash with us the most is probably the yellow group. Uh, that yellow group's actually on the quadrant exact opposite of what we are. And when you take a look at what that group does, that group really is about bringing everybody along. They're the group that's got all the empathy. Uh, we're not going to work well with them at all times because we're not going to want to socialize everything with the group. One of the things that we're known for is when you have a target and a project, uh, if you want to take an example of shooting a gun, uh, we're going to be the group that's more you know, ready, shoot, aim, shoot. Uh, you get enough data before you see where you're going, then you make those little adjustments so that you can make the goal and that, that yellow quadrant, they're going to bug us because it's going to be ready, aim, 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 shoot and taking that long to make the next step uh, is gonna be really get on the last nerve of somebody from the Blue Quadrant. Uh, so I hope today was able to tell you a little bit more about the Blue Quadrant and why some of the things bug you. Also, some of the things you're gonna be great at because of the focus areas that you have. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Hello, it's Raj Kalahasti from University of Michigan. Now I'll be speaking with you today about the green quadrant in the Michigan model of leadership. When you think about the people in this quadrant, these are the people who are extremely flexible and very externally focused. These are the people who want to do a lot of new things and want to do them first. These are the people with those radical and breakthrough ideas. These are the artists, the visionaries, the revolutionaries, envisioning the future and creating the future. Think of Steve Jobs, Elon Musk. That's the type of people who are in this quadrant. Going for the moonshots and solving those big audacious issues. 
anticipating that next big product or service and in many cases generating hope for many of us success for these people is often solving that 10x type of problem 100x type of problem not just making incremental improvements come up with those big ideas prototype them and more, most importantly originality is prized by these people the upside these are the people who very much come up with those breakthrough solutions the iphone sending a person to mars the hyperloop system the flip side there's a lot of risk with this person they could be all over the place very undisciplined unfocused unable to come up with any realistic plan that gets tangible results so for the green people to be successful you need to develop a set of skills or team up with people who brings in structure reduces risk could make realistic plans that drive tangible results. So these are the people who typically are in the red quadrant and, and could complement the strengths from the green quadrant. Think of what Tim Cook did at Apple working with Steve Jobs. Think of what Steve Ballmer did at Microsoft working with Bill Gates. So that's type of uh, complementary skill sets that could really go with the people in the green quadrant. So. Hopefully that gives a little bit of uh, what the green quadrant uh, uh, is about and what types of people are in this quadrant and what are the strengths and potential pitfalls uh, for those people. So pleasure speaking with you. My name is Kevin Blue and today I'd like to talk to you about making a positive difference in the world by using the Michigan model of leadership. But first I would like to share with you a quote from Robert Quinn a professor of management and organization. When we enter the fundamental state of leadership, we inspire those around us to a higher level of performance. In the Michigan model of leadership, I would like to talk to you about one of the four different colors used to capture a leadership trait in the model, the color yellow. As we take this journey together, we need to answer these simple questions. What are the critical leadership skills you will need as we develop and define our leadership style? Do we lead others while building a consensus and commitment? Do we inspire others towards a challenging vision? Do we select and develop employees? Do we lead positive teams? In the yellow collaborative community, we need to ask ourselves, how do we interact with each other? informal, long discussions, personal, or face-to-face. -face. Second, how do we help a group achieve? By making sure all are included, by promoting the shared learnings, by helping to develop others. Finally, what don't you like in a group? Non-constructive -const comments, abrasive personalities, not giving credit where credit is due. In this yellow collaborative family, we pride ourselves with the community by practicing the culture and developing competencies. We pride ourselves with the knowledge by managing and searching and then applying that learning. We pride ourselves with people by seeing the potential, by building commitment, being trustworthy, caring, and patient listeners by participating. I would like to end with a quote from Bill George. Leaders are defined by their values. The values of authentic leaders are shaped by their personal beliefs and developed through study, self-examination, consultations with others, and years of experience. If leaders are not true to their values they profess, people quickly lose confidence in their leadership. Thank you. So now that you have a better understanding of which quadrant you identify with, what more can you do with this information? Well, the Sanger Leadership Center can give you a lot of ideas. 
but I think a lot can be learned from this wheel of positive zones and negative zones. From this, I think you can learn about the best strengths in your quadrant. For example, a green is all about creative action, whose positivity is contagious and is focused on growth. But someone external that's watching how a green leader behaves might see their approach as chaotic, confused, and wasteful. Being aware of these potential negatives will help you to better manage your behaviors to avoid these negative associations. Can you think of a famous green? Many people think of Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. Steve Jobs was a product visionary. Steve Jobs is not the leader who you want managing your assembly line or supply chain. Who would be well suited for a leadership role like that? Probably a red or a blue. Another key takeaway is to consider which zone is directly opposite of the one with which you identify. If you identify with yellow, for example, you're likely to get along well with other yellows and drive your blue counterparts absolutely nuts. A blue will see you as indecisive, overly permissive, and thriving on groupthink. Similarly, you might find their approach as overly exclusive and creating conflict. Approaching interaction with someone who's cut from a different cloth with a framework for doing so and acknowledging that you do things differently is the first step toward better collaboration. So now you know the basics of the Michigan Model of Leadership. The Sanger, Sanger Leadership Center can provide you with more information about this insightful framework for leadership. But hopefully you found this lesson to be instructive.